today's guest, Nadia Almada, broke new ground when she won original reality TV show Big Brother 20 years ago this month. Her unforgettable winning moment gave the show its biggest audience ever, and she was on the front pages of all the papers, all the magazines wanted her on their cover, and she found herself headline news. Now, after 10 weeks of tantrums, tears and shrieking laughter, Big Brother is over for another year. And among the 13 housemates, one face has been splashed all over the front pages since the series began. The thrill was, how could I possibly win Big Brother knowing um, the sort of past that I come through? Um, and there was a feeling that the whole acceptance for me was the number one sort of, uh, you know, thought in my mind. Here we are, 20 years on. It is Nadia Almada. <laughs> Just gonna sit down. It's extraordinary <laughs> looking back. <laughs> just what not, that's like the memories we all have. But I'm, what a moment for you. Just you to you know take that moment in again 20 years on. And it was a life-changing moment. It was a definitely life-changing moment. And um, and 20 year, years on, I'm still <laughs> I'm still hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> it was extraordinary, I keep saying it. Um, but it was a fun time and um, and it's still as much as relevant as it today Absolutely. as it was then. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Was it's... it shocking to you when you came out and realized how famous you were at that like it was extremely you were everywhere at that point. And also Portugal, because obviously mm -hmm. my country of birth is Portugal, so everywhere, including these two countries, my adopted country and my country of birth, they both were really kind of involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, Colleen, yeah. I had no idea. I mean, I didn't even think I would even make it to first week, to mm -hmm. second week. I didn't even expect that at all. So coming out and seeing the, the you know, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the reaction. It was, 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 yeah, ins amazing. was, yeah, it was, it was amazing, it was amazing, it was good, it was good. So was you were good. showering in hills as well. And oh, everything. What I was still the... do, what's it all about? Who doesn't? Do you know what I mean? We all yeah. should shower in yeah. hills. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, fight night. Was that one of your best nights? I heard somewhere that it was one of your best nights. What was that about? Listen, uh, before the Real Housewives, the Teresa Judice, New Jersey, before flipping a table, there was another flipping table, OK? <laughs> History he erases uh, somewhere, somehow. But they are. Uh, um, um, listen, it was a playful time. And I think also for me it was, even though I think we've, because you've been, you've done yeah, Big yeah, Brother, yeah. and I yeah. think, uh, I'm not, mm. I think you have. And, mm. and the thing for me, even though it, we were like locked up 24-7 yes. security, it was quote unquote a prison made of cardboard, really, essentially. But I was so emotionally and f spiritually so free in there because it was a world within a world. Mm. And that concept of living that sort of uh, experiment, it, it was, oh, look at me! <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it was very 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 it, for me it was very liberating and I never felt free emotionally and spiritually and actually looking at those pictures I have to say I need to profusely apologize to her for fat shaming her for objectifying her for kind of mistreating her mm. and in a way somewhere somehow along the lines I compartmentalized that young lady for not being quote unquote, you know, your standard <laughs> Not no, no, no. you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I need to apologize yeah. to her. And I know I'm talking to me, mm -hmm. really. Uh, and I'm sorry for doing that to, to Nadia, really, because, you know, um, it was a special moment, you know, mm. and somehow, somewhere, a lot, somewhere along the lines, it kind of, I had to kind of, you know, put it in the attic or in the basement somewhere, lock it around. I didn't think I even wrapped her yeah. Yeah. In, in a beautiful cushion, a beautiful, you know, it was just like, I need to kind of, uh, yeah. But anyway, no, but <laughs> I think the... it comes from experience and maturity yeah. as well as we grow, mm. with, you know, as a midlifer, hello, 20 years on, yeah. I have to embrace um, a different strength in me and I, I embrace it and, um, I feel better for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs>
Fabio. <laughs> Thank you. Talking about acceptance yeah. and embracing, why was it that you requested for your gender identity not to be revealed to your housemates? And if you went in now, <laughs> would you do the same? Yes, I would do the same. And it's nobody's business, really. Mm. And but also, you, I mean, because obviously you, the, the public, the public knew, knew, yeah. But you didn't. Uh, I why think did you want to keep? It's that a fair thing? question. I think in those days it was very much uh, like a secret, quote unquote, a secret, because that's how we were sort of under represented everywhere mm. as trans um, women of a trans identity, transgender women in those days. It wasn't something that we would come out publicly and you know be visible mm -hmm. in any aspect of our society, societal, in anywhere really. So, but my narrative was. Was, and my understanding was that only is a facet of me, just a small part of who I am. Yes. So in the house, in a world within a world, in that sort of situation, I almost sort of kind of took you know, control. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I created my own narrative. Because let's remember, before you get into the Big Brother house and having that amazing experience, I've, you know, you, I've been pigeon box, label every single medical term, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, all the <laughs> other sort of, you know, derogative terms and things like that. So I just wanted to be that young lady. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, she should be. Yeah, and that young woman, you know, <laughs> you know, fuller than life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which you definitely were. <laughs> um, you, At times, you, you, know. That, you know. You say that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And do you think we've progressed or regressed when it comes to the transgender oh. uh, subject? Yeah. And also, you know, you're so uh, positive about being a role model for the community. I think from coming out of the show, I sort of became this breakthrough sort of representation. The first point of reference for many trans people uh, out there. Uh, and that, it was an important conversation to have. The answer to your question, I think it's very toxic at the moment. Yeah. It's very politic. What's the word? <laughs> yes, it is. There's a lot of discord and it's almost like one-sided and yeah. not you know, in conversation, in dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I think what's important is for us, uh, for the world to see the humanity behind the person versus any sort of, you know, religion, gender, sexual mm -hmm. privacy. You know, let's have the humanity, the humanity and mm -hmm. see beyond yeah. any of that. Yeah. And stop dissecting uh, and segregating, or even separators as women uh, in the aspect that, that, you know, the chromosomes, the, you know, the science, the biological things, all of those things are so like, at the time, we, we didn't even have that understanding. No. But now that seems to be a way forward to kind of separate us, mm -hmm. you know, um, equally. People living their lives. Yeah, for living their lives, yeah, especially freely. within the, you know, in the, you know, as a woman of trans identity, I am a feminist. And I feel like sometimes yeah, I'm scared to say that because it's almost like contradicting, but I am not. I am truly pro-autonomy uh, and freedom of and equally societal, economical rights as men. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think it's a very toxic situation and I'm sorry that I'm dying. You're doing some great work. No, yeah. You're doing, doing some work. fantastic work with Thank trans you. Can Thank I ask, you. Trans we were talking episode. before, you know, Kelly was saying about when her... Yeah. Um, you know, sport career kind of came to an end and all of that. Have you, after all the excitement at Big Brother winning it, all the adulation, and all, what was the it like adulation. for you when that kind of started to peter out and how did you feel? Uh, it, it was it, it was a, another uh, learning experience to me, for sure, and th therefore I had to kind of sort of carve my, my own new career path. Um, because believe you me, no one comes to you, knocks on your door. You have yeah. to go out there and do it for yourselves. Mm -hmm. So I kind of did this very kind of business-like sort of kind of mentality, which was a SWOT, SWOT analysis, which is your strength, weaknesses. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do I like? I like fashion, I like beauty, I like, you know, that sort of kind of mm -hmm. industry. So I thought, okay, listen, let's do hairdressing. So I kind of carved my, you know, my career were on that. And I trained for one of the, the biggest houses in the UK, one of the most international renowned names, Sassoon. And uh, at the end of it, not even expecting anything back, I got to be contracted and work for them, you know what I mean? And going from working, in, uh, going in, into a salon and also as being an educator within such a mm. prestigious, prestigious, you know, uh, establishment. So yeah, answer to your question, mm -hmm. I don't know. You have to make what you, you know, well, you have that's to wear, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. both for 20 years, we're both hanging <laughs> in there, so let's do it. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs>
Nadia, one of the best love of my smith. Oh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Nadia Almada. Thank you.